The thing that separates Bok Tor from other forms of traditional martial arts, of course, is that Bok Tor can fight. So if you practice Bok Tor, you want to learn to fight, you want to use the Bok Tor techniques. And this is where the problem comes in. If you don't spar, you're not fighting. But if you spar, you wind up using all the other techniques you've learned in your life prior to this. So when Andrea and I are fighting, we look more like Muay Thai or street fighting or boxing or we look like something else, not necessarily Bokator. And you'll see just a limited number of the Bokator techniques in here. Now because Bradal Saray Khmer Boxing comes from Bokator, arguably all the punches, kicks, elbows and knees that we're throwing are part of Bokator. They're more closely related to Brad Al Saray, which is the Khmer boxing. And that's the problem. So when you're learning a new art, and I found this with Bokator, I found this with Savat, and I found this with Chaya. These are three very specific arts that have a very specific way of fighting. And if you spar all the time, you just wind up reverting to your original habits, which, you know, both Andre and I have a boxing background. And you'll see the fighting starts to look like some sort of Western fighting style. Another issue that I had uh, during my entire time in Asia, which at the, at the time of this filming is almost nine years, I was a professional boxer before, and I'm used to having a very tight boxing style where my hands are close up to my face and my elbows are protecting my sides and my front. And as I've, had, as I've learned from Al Saray and Muay Thai and Book Tour, I've learned to open up my stance. You have to open your arms a lot wider. You hold them higher and, and a lot wider. You don't let them touch your face and your body because if you do that you can't see kicks coming in from the sides or from underneath. And now Andrea has had two years of boxing and two years of kickboxing, but the kickboxing was in Italy so I have to assume that it's some, sort of, some form of Western kickboxing, although the kicks may come from Taekwondo or Karate or Kung Fu, but uh, whenever I pressure Andrea, he's also uh, turtling up in that in that box uh, in that boxer's uh, cover-up type of of stance. And when he does that, then he can't see the kicks coming out of his legs. He can't see the strikes coming down on the top of his head. You know, boxing striking the top of the head is not even legal. So this it takes years to break yourself of this. And if you spend a lot of time sparring, you may actually just reinforce these other habits that you're bringing with you from other martial arts. It's like walking a tightrope. We want to learn the art, we want to fight, but then we got to make sure that we're fighting with the art that we're learning. Because I've been filming and traveling so much recently, my training hasn't been as consistent as I would like, so my fitness is way down. And you really feel it. You know, you see openings for punches and kicks, but you just can't even throw them because you're too tired, too out of breath. So basically, it's really important to stay in shape, to stay fit. You gotta keep that cardio fitness going, the muscular fitness, you gotta keep it. You'll see Andrea trying a number of times to throw the flying knee, which is one of the Boca Tour techniques, and he's not quite got it. When he's hitting me, it's just sort of knocking me out of the way. It's not really hurting me. And uh, when I first started fighting, and like 30 years ago, people didn't throw flying sidekicks and flying knees and flying things because we were told, well, you know, these, these techniques are ineffective, the guy moves out of the way, this and that. Nowadays in, in UFC and in uh, uh, mixed martial arts competitions, you'll actually see people using a flying technique to be able to clear di distance, to be able to throw uh, what they call like the Superman punch, for example, where you just leap with your hand out in front of you and just, just you can cross tremendous distance can avoid the kicks and avoid the takedowns. So these techniques are viable, however you have to be really good at them to be able to use them. Obviously they leave you completely vulnerable. And remember that when you're flying at the guy, your momentum is moving forward so he could just as easily kick you or punch you and hurt you. But um, I've seen it. I've seen knockouts from Superman kicks. I've seen knockouts from flying knees and flying kicks. But um, they're really hard to get. But keep trying. And then, of course, I tried one of my movie kicks and uh, didn't work as well as it does in the movies. I just wound up flat on my back.
The nice thing about Bulk Tour is that it has something for everyone. It's a massive, massive system with thousands and thousands of movements. I've concentrated exclusively on Bulk Tour fighting. Most of the foreigners so far have concentrated on learning the animal styles and forms for the Krama tests. Some of the Khmer students have specialized in learning stick. Sanung Korichuan, or Wan as we call him, is the Grandmaster's son and he's concentrated on learning the double swords and in this particular demonstration they're, they're using two sticks to simulate two short Khmer swords but also the sticks themselves could be weapons so they could either fight with just these sticks or they could fight with swords the same way. Because the Bokator team does so many demonstrations and animal forms and weapons forms lend themselves to demonstration, these guys have learned to just repeat and repeat and practice thousands and thousands of times each of these routines. And so at the end of the day, what they're doing is not very different than what they would need to do for movies if they're working in Hollywood. They're all really good at screaming, jumping, and dying. I like the way they die. They die very well. Sadly, because I don't have external microphones, can't afford them, uh, we can't hear the master's words here, but what he's saying to me is that we need a very, very small motion. He's very big on these short elbows. And he's telling me that by doing this short elbow and twisting my hip into it and just popping it out there very quickly, I can get more power. But Interestingly, he's also telling me that when I pop it out, I've got to hold it for a split second because we don't just want to uh, graze or graze or impact just the surface of the target. We want to penetrate in and to do that. We have to kind of hold the elbow out there for a split second.